and maybe that coin isn't available on Gemini, and you're thinking, I wanna pay five times the fees to trade degenerate bull What's up YouTube, it's your boy Rhett, back at it again with another video. Today I'm gonna to be going over how to make recurring purchases on Coinbase Pro. I'm sure you've probably noticed a lot of the front end user interface heavy, like really easy user experience sites like Coinbase and Gemini and Cash App have an option for you to make recurring Bitcoin or cryptocurrency purchases. Unfortunately, those apps all have dog fees associated with them that just steal a bunch of money from you, which is not good. You wanna be minimizing the amount of fees that you're paying to get exposure to any of these different cryptocurrencies. Unfortunately, the better fee structure sites like Coinbase Pro and like Gemini and like Kraken, there is no option within most of their UIs to say, hey, I wanna buy $20 of Bitcoin every two weeks and take advantage of the really low fees that you're offering me. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to, for any cryptocurrency pair on Coinbase Pro, still get their 0.5% fees, but also automate those buy orders on any schedule that you want to buy. If you want to buy them daily, I got you. If you want to buy them weekly, I got you. Whatever combination of days that you want to buy cryptocurrency on Coinbase Pro, we're going to do it in this video. I'm going to show you the entire thing. So go down below, smash the like button for saving money on fees, and let's level up your brain. <laughs> Okay, so here we are on Coinbase Pro, and the first thing that we're going to need to do to get our recurring purchases working is we're going to need to come up to the top right-hand corner here where it's under ourselves, and we're gonna click on API. And when I talk about APIs, a lot of you guys go, you read, I'm not dealing with APIs, that's a bunch of that I don't know how to do because I don't know how to code. Well, really good news for you, I've already done all of the coding, so you're not gonna have to do really any coding at all. You're just gonna have to copy and paste values that we create here into parts of the code, but you're not gonna have to write anything really by yourself. I've also already done this entire process basically with people who have been using the Gemini API, and I'd say 90 plus percent of the people that have gotten that working have no coding experience whatsoever. So definitely don't be turned off just by that. Try to stick with what we're doing here, and I think that that you'll be really successful if you just like focus on it for 20 minutes and follow all the steps as we go through them. If you don't have 15 to 20 minutes to do this, then there isn't really another option, which is unfortunate. And I could go on a whole soapbox about how it's important to learn to code. And this is like a real world example of how if you are willing to put in the 15 minutes, you're actually gonna save a lot of money in the long run, but I'll shut up and we'll just keep going. So you're gonna get to this API screen here. Yours will probably look like this. It'll say you haven't created any API keys, so you're going to hit create one right here. Let's actually name this recurring purchases and we'll give it the view and trade permission. You actually don't need to give it the transfer permission because in this demo, we're not doing transfers at all. We're not doing deposits and withdrawals. Let's just keep them separate for now. And when I upload another video on how to do deposits and withdrawals, you can make a separate set of API keys and do the transferring there. And that's actually gonna give you better sort of segregated security so that if someone hacked one of your scripts, you know, maybe they could buy buy something, but they wouldn't be able to transfer anything, et cetera, et cetera. We actually just need to copy this passphrase so that we can reference it later. So I'm gonna open up a text file and say passphrase equals this. And so then over here, we can just hit create API key. And so now once you've given it your two-factor authentication code, it's gonna show you your API secret. You're gonna copy this and we're gonna put it just in that same text file. So we'll call it secret equals this. And then finally, there's this thing, this string of characters right below default profile. Mine starts with 27ED blah, blah, blah. If you just copy this, this is gonna be your API key. So key equals, and then whatever that was. And that's it, you've totally set up the entire Coinbase API. Now you just need to copy and paste those values. It really is very, very simple, I promise you. That was the hardest part and it's already done. All right, so next let's jump into the code and use those API keys that we generated to start making some trades. All right, so I left a link down in the description and it's going to be to a Notion page that I'm hosting. I just think that Notion is an easier place to write code basically for people to copy and paste it from. I know it's not as elegant as GitHub, but I I feel like the audience for this video is not going to be very technical. And so I think Notion is a better place to host the code. So down in the description, I'm gonna have the link to this Coinbase Pro API functions for AWS code. And you're going to see all of your buy and sell crypto code right here. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna go over to console.aws.amazon.com and you're gonna sign up for AWS. I have another video from a couple weeks ago that I'll link up in the cards here where I talked about what AWS is, why we actually need AWS and why it's a 
more elegant solution than doing this on our own computers. And then what are some of the security concerns with AWS and what are some best practices that you should be implementing for yourself? So if you're not familiar with AWS, definitely go check that video out after this one. I also go through how to set up an AWS account. There might be a couple little tricks in there, but I was actually able to set up a totally brand new AWS account in less than five minutes. So if you are new to AWS, definitely check that video out. But for the rest of you, I'm gonna just continue with the demo here. So now you're at console.aws.amazon.com you've got your console up and you're going to look at all services and you're going to do a search for Lambda and it's going to be up here under compute. So you're just going to click on Lambda here. The first thing that you're going to want to do when you come into this Lambda thing for the first time is you're going to see layers over here on the left and you're going to click on that. You're not going to have any layers probably at first, but what you're going to want to do is hit create layer up here. You're going to call this Coinbase Pro API. And then the zip file that you're gonna give it actually is this layer.zip over here. So back in Notion, you're gonna download this layer.zip and you're just gonna put that on your desktop. I got a lot of questions when I put up the Gemini API tutorial about like what is layer.zip. Layer.zip is basically what allows us to execute Coinbase Pro API calls inside of the AWS Lambda function environment. So when we execute commands like creating an authenticated client, which is what we need to do to create a market order right here. When we write those commands, if AWS doesn't have the layer.zip and it doesn't have those Python dependencies in place, then it's not going to know what authenticated client means. And it's not going to know what place market order means. Those are just going to be random words to it. And it's not going to understand what to do. And so you can actually see this for yourself. If you don't put layer.zip in there, you're just going to get an error that says like, what does authenticated client mean? Bad word or it'll even come up to import CB Pro up there. It'll say, the first thing we're doing is importing CB Pro. It's gonna say, I don't know what CB Pro is. Please like help me find out what that means. And the way that you're gonna help AWS find out what that means is upload layer zip into this layer right here. So you're gonna click upload, you're gonna give it layer.zip, and this is built on Python 3.8. So you're gonna hit create here. So there you go, successfully created layer, Coinbase Pro API, sweet. So now we have that up in AWS. So now we'll come back to Lambda and we'll go to functions over on the left-hand side. You're not gonna have any here, but I already have a bunch for uh, Gemini. You're gonna hit create function in the top right, author from scratch, runtime environment, Python 3.8, your function name, call it by crypto, Coinbase Pro, create function. It's gonna spin for a little bit and there it goes. So when we create this for the first time, this code is already going to be here. And so we're just going to highlight all of this and delete it. And then we're going to go over to the Notion webpage. We're going to highlight all of this. Starts with import CB Pro, ends with that curly brace right there. And so here is where we're gonna input our key, our secret, and our passphrase. So if you still have that text document open, you'll copy the passphrase, you'll copy the secret, and you'll copy the key. And so you just wanna make sure that it's exactly what was generated in that previous step where we generated the key, the secret, and the passphrase, and you're just gonna put those between quotes. And it'll show up as green if you did it correctly. We're gonna see BTC USD right here. Let's make the buy size 10 because I only have $20 in my account right now. And we're gonna buy. So then all we need to do to get this to work is we're gonna come down here to layers at the very bottom and we're gonna click add a layer. We're gonna hit custom layers and we're gonna choose the Coinbase Pro API layer version one that we just added to AWS. So all we've done so far is click buttons, copy and paste these keys, secrets, and phrases and we changed the amount that we wanted to buy from 20 to 10. So now we're gonna hit deploy. Deploy is going to push our changes up into AWS and then we're gonna hit test. So I'll hit create. You actually have to give this test a name. So we'll call it demo. Hit create down here. Test event demo was successfully saved. So now if we hit test, you just bought $10 of BTC. So now let's go over to Coinbase and see if it worked. There it is. So now I have $10 of USD left and I have 0 0.000219 whatever of Bitcoin. And you can see that we bought $9.95 of Bitcoin and there was a 0.05% fee basically. So we paid five cents in fees and we got $9.95 of Bitcoin. So now we have a script that every time we run this script, it's going to buy $10 of Bitcoin. So now how do we automate this script that we've already put up into AWS? What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the AWS icon up in the top left. We're gonna go on all services again. And this time we're gonna go to management and governance and we're gonna click on CloudWatch. So now we're in CloudWatch. We're gonna go over to rules in the sidebar under events and we're gonna create a new rule. And instead of event pattern, we're gonna give it a schedule. And if it was fixed rate of five minutes, we'd be buying a lot of Bitcoin. So let's make it once a day. And if you want it to be even more specific, you could give it a cron expression and you can click learn more to see what 
kind of cron expression values basically you can build and you can build anything. You can build however many minutes you wanna do it, on what hour of the day, on what day of the month, on what month of the year, on what day of the week, on what year you wanna do it. You could buy $10 of Bitcoin in 21.99. And I'll leave some common cron expressions like maybe the second Friday of every month or the 15th and the 30th. I'll leave stuff like that down in the description that maybe some of you guys can try out. If you come up with a cron expression here that works, this is gonna be for the 15th and the 30th of every month. It will actually show you what the next 10 trigger days are. So that can be helpful for you basically telling if you wrote the cron expression correctly or not. So this one you can see the next trigger date would be the 15th and the 30th and the 15th and the 30th of the next month, next month, next month, blah, blah, blah. So you would set whatever you want here. Fixed rate of days is going to probably be enough for most people. You could do this once a day or you could do this once every seven days. You could do this once every two weeks or whatever you wanna do. So we'll just leave it at once every day for now. And then we'll hit add a target, Lambda function and we'll click the function buy crypto coinbase pro we'll hit configure details we'll name this buy bitcoin every day and we'll create rule oh can't have spaces in the name when will we learn create rule cool so now we have a rule that will run once a day or whenever we told it to run and it's gonna buy Bitcoin. And you're gonna get that same 0.5% fee structure that we just got in our first buy. I'm gonna actually disable this for now. And then next, I'm gonna show you how you can use this exact same script to buy not just Bitcoin, but any currency pair that's available on Coinbase Pro. All right, so if we wanna edit the script, let's go back up to AWS and we'll click on Lambda and then we'll click on buy crypto Coinbase Pro, the script that we just wrote. We'll close execution results up here to get back to our Lambda function. And we'll see this symbol right here, it says BTC USD. And we'll see the comment says, replace symbol with whatever currency pair you wanna trade, list of currency pairs available on Notion. So let's go back to Notion and we'll see list of currency pairs on Coinbase Pro. So let's click this little toggle and you'll see every Coinbase Pro currency pair. I really don't condone any of this altcoin stuff, but just for example purposes, I will buy some ETH. So if we come in here and we change that symbol to ETH USD, and for example, right, if you were not in the United States and you needed to trade with GBP instead, you would have to do ETH GBP. Otherwise, it's going to look for $10 of USD, right? So it's gonna look for this amount of whatever this currency is. Let's buy some ETH USD just to show you that it works. Okay, so I forgot to deploy the code. So I'm gonna deposit 20 more dollars. So let's deploy the code. So now that we've deployed the code, it should pick up the change ETH USD. So let's hit test. And there you go, you bought $10 of ETH. So if we go to ETH, so if we go up to filled up here, we can see that I bought $10 of ETH and that the fee came over 0.05, just like we expected. And now what we can also do is we can change this now to ETH BTC and we can change this to sell. And then we'll come back to Coinbase Pro. We'll see how much ETH do we have. We have this much ETH, so we'll copy this and we'll paste it over here. So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to sell ETH into Bitcoin and we're trying to sell all the ETH that we just bought. Okay, so the error we've been getting is that the funds is too accurate. The smallest unit is to the fifth decimal place. So let's see now if when we round to the fifth decimal place, if this ETH BTC sell order goes through. Looks like yes. So now if we go to orders, and filled, we should see that we filled for that amount of Bitcoin. So if we go back to Coinbase, we should now have very little ETH and more Bitcoin. So let's see how much ETH we have. Yep, we have no ETH. So we have sell ETH BTC, right? So we sold our ETH and bought BTC. And so you can think of this as whatever this word is, is what's happening to the first part of the symbol. So if this was buy ETH BTC, we would be buying ETH with our Bitcoin or Easy example, BTC USD. We're buying Bitcoin with our USD. But if we're selling, then we're selling our Bitcoin into USD, right? Or selling our ETH into USD. And so this here was just a trick that we had to do because of the error that we were getting earlier where it told us we could only have five decimal places. There are gonna be a lot of common errors like that. I'm not gonna include that in the code. So that's an example of something where like, if you got stuck and you saw that error and you said, oh, I don't know how to fix this, definitely DM me on Twitter because that's like a really quick fix. Once the video has been live for a couple months, I think 
we should get a bunch of errors that a lot of people are having. And so then at that point, I'll make an FAQ and I'll show you how to debug all of those common errors. So definitely check back on this video and then check my blog, ret.blog, for any updates or FAQs or ways to fix common errors that might come up when you're using this script for some more niche use cases, like how can I sell ETH into BTC like we just did. And then again, if you did wanna automate your sales of ETH into BTC at any point, you could, you know, deploy your changes and then go back over to AWS, hit up CloudWatch and go through all the steps that we had just done over on CloudWatch, create another set of rules and automate your script here. And so then again, very easy to come in here and enable and disable these. And then also setting the schedule to really whatever you want. So this is a totally flexible solution that you can really customize to whatever needs you have. And again, take advantage of that. I think it's like four or five times lower fees when you use Coinbase Pro versus Coinbase. So if you guys had any trouble implementing this solution, go head over to Twitter and DM me at Retri. I'll leave my Twitter link down in the description too if you spell it wrong or whatever. I've had a lot of experience helping non-technical users implement the Gemini API so far. And I think you guys are going to have a lot of success implementing the Coinbase Pro API, even if you have little to no technical experience. With that being said, the Gemini API strategy is today the best way to be buying cryptocurrency because the fee structure is lower. It's actually only 0.1% fees over at Gemini compared to 0.5 at Coinbase. And the Gemini API strategy gives you 10 free transfers a month, which the Coinbase Pro strategy gives you none. So if you haven't checked out that video yet, and you are interested in even lower fees than Coinbase Pro can offer you, I'll leave a link to that Gemini video up in the cards. Definitely check that out. Very similar strategy to what we're doing here. Places that the Coinbase API actually wins is that while it is not cheaper, there are more cryptocurrency pairs available on Coinbase Pro as of today. And the Coinbase Pro API allows you to automate deposits and withdrawals, which as of today, the Gemini API does not allow you to do. So in Coinbase Pro land, you can theoretically automate all your deposits, all your buys, all your sells, and all your transfers off the exchange to your own cryptocurrency hardware wallet. Let me know down in the comments if you do want to see a video on how to automate deposits and withdrawals with the Coinbase Pro API to make this a fully automated system. Or go ahead and leave a comment if you thought that anything that I said was confusing. I do still respond to all the comments. Like the video if you learned something and so YouTube can share this video around and we can help other people who are currently using Coinbase and getting wrecked by fees. Help them switch to Coinbase Pro, still automate all their transactions, but then get that lower fee structure for themselves. Subscribe hit the notification bell for new videos every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I love you all. Goodbye.